to Jay Jake Jackets. Gear up to fire the cannon and hit the ice with your host, Jay Ashdown and Jake Gearinger. Been, yeah, it's been a weird couple of days, but uh, I'll get through it. <laughs> I should have. I should have figured. Do keep pushing through, man. I should have figured though, right? Because like the last couple of days before that at work were just like really smooth and fine, and then it was just like. <laughs> yeah, you should have assumed that something bad was coming. <laughs> Murphy's Law, right? What can't go wrong will go wrong. Exactly. Just like the Carolina game. <laughs> Yeah, God, that was an interesting one, wasn't it? <laughs> we'll talk about it. Um, we're going to do Kepi's first. We're going to recap the first three games of the thing. Uh, we're going to talk about who Columbus can shop at the deadline, a couple mm-hmm. other Columbus things, a couple other league things, and um, yeah. I mean, look, gonna... this, this podcast is going to be very Blue Jackets for once. <laughs> right, yeah, isn't it? The Blue Jackets podcast is finally going to talk about the Jackets, huh? <laughs> I'm going to go first on Kepi's because I think I know who you're going to pick and I'm going to take him from you. Okay, who are you going to pick? Uh, over a point per game, Patty. Oh, that's not who I was going to pick. Oh, really? Who, who, sh- who where, Which one should I go with today for the for the podcast? Should I go throwback red or classic? Ooh, I like the throwback red. All right, Doug, let's go. <laughs> um yeah i'm going 47 brain gay 47 is very good 47 is awesome 47 uh fanatics is okay no but you know me big lids guy right yeah so you so you're going with patty which is you know understandable 33 games played 36 points let's go over this friggin 11 game point streak right now yes so it started on january 27th uh at home against the rangers two assists at montreal two goals versus florida two goals at washington two goals and an assist at buffalo one assist at montreal one and one at calgary an assist at chicago patrick line Versus Buffalo, two assists. Versus Toronto, two goals. At Florida, one goal. And then at Carolina, obviously, nothing. Yeah, yeah they got shut out. So, yeah, unbelievable. Uh, well-deserved. He deserves <laughs> another one. But, no, I'm going to go with a, in a different direction. That was my plan all along. So, haha. Was it real? Okay. All yes. right, then. <laughs> yeah, no. I mean, well, Jake, you know me. Big goalie I'm guy. always going to give love for the tendies. Yeah, you do. Come on, but I, I think Barube deserves it. I think he does too. I, I think, and, and we can get into this because I think it, it correlates to the deadline. I think this guy, I know it's just a small four game sample size. Mm-hmm. I think he's more than earned the opportunity to be the backup of this team. Yeah. I, I mean, listen, we're going to get into like, the whole reason why for a while there we've been down to our fourth and fifth guys. Yeah. I, here's, here's the thing. And I say it like, I know that this is a small stretch. This is only four game stretch for a goaltender, Mm -hmm. you know, but Jake, we haven't seen a four game stretch this good from Jonas Corpusello since they were in the bubble. Right. He wasn't good last year. He's not good this year. Arube is the first goalie since, or the first Steve Columbus Mason. goalie since Steve Mason to Steve start 3 0. <laughs> and here's the thing, Jake. I'm looking at these games, all four of them. Um, three of them are against teams that are like, e- they were easily before the season locks to make the playoffs. Now, maybe, now I, which is huge, a huge contenders. Yes. Yes, a little bit of a cold take on my end because I thought the Panthers were going to take a step back. 
<laughs> uh, yeah, you did. You thought they but, were going to take at least a yeah. little bit of a step back. And then you, it, yes, it was funny and, because you also said Montreal and they took way more of a step back. Yeah, I didn't project that they were going to be the worst team in the league. But I, I thought the Panthers were going to take a little bit of a step back because I thought their goaltending was going to take a step back. And Right. The goaltending has been fine, but it's really just their, their world leader. They, 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 I, they might have the best offense in the league. Uh, yeah. They like might have the best – they might have the best dynamic duo in the league. Yes. <laughs> Between like, like, Barkov not even, not even and Huberto. Huberto's unbelievable. Barkov's incredible. They, I think they had the best uh, one-two punch on defense, too, with Ekblad and Uyghur. Uyghur is, like, very, you know, you don't expect a name like that to be yeah, he, one of the he, best defensemen in the league, but here he is. He, he like it's incredible. Like you can thank Jay Fresh for that because like it wasn't until like three years ago that people started like noticing this guy. Mm -hmm. And progressively, as he's gotten more and more ice time, he's just turned into one of the best defensemen in the league. Right. I feel absolute absolutely confident in saying that he's definitely easily a top fifteen defenseman in the league. Two very deserving cappies, though. But yeah, no, Barubi deserves. I'm looking at three teams: Toronto, Florida, and Carolina, who are all really good. Even Buffalo, dude. Like, sure, Buffalo is not a good team, but Buffalo they're better than they were. Because, well, Buffalo struggles because of their defense and goaltending. They're mm -hmm. still a team that could put the puck in the net. Yeah, and he was good against them. He was one of the he was one of the three stars. He stopped what he stopped. He stopped uh, stopped 33 of 36, and then against Toronto. Um, he was one of the stars against the stop 39 to 42. And then against Florida, he stopped 39 to 42. Okay. okay. <laughs> and then against against Carolina. Now, now this one, you know, usually we would freak out about the shots on goal, but I think considering the fact that it was their fourth game in six nights mm -hmm. against a really good Carolina team who had three nights off prior. And it um, was a back to back for us. It was a back to back as well. Um, they get they got out shot fifty to nineteen, which isn't great. Obviously, I, ooh, we all yeah. know that. Okay, it's bad. Uh, well, but yeah, I think you can live with it. I considering mean, the circumstances. Yes, if you if you encompass the more like the timing of everything recently I, with the schedule, I think, it's, I think it's fair for them to to have a game like that. Yeah. They, so um, he stops. He stops forty six of fifty. <laughs> he had a nine twenty eight <laughs> percentage in a game that he gave up four goals. <laughs> so like, I think uh, he's doing okay. <laughs> he's doing more than okay. He's got a nine twenty four save percentage in this stretch. And then obviously Patrick Line, a, uh, pay Patty please. Yeah, give him give him a blank check. Frankly, I'm, I'm honestly. <laughs> um. So he's going through his qualifying offer deal, uh, and this can transition us into you know game recaps or whatever. He's yeah. going in. He's in his qualifying offer deal. He has you know he went through this eleven game point streak to go above a point per game. Right. Is he still like fourth on the team of points? Team. Yeah. Um, yeah, it, it might take him some time because the fact that he missed games but mm -hmm. <laughs> i'm kidding he's third <laughs> oh he's third okay he passed oliver oh my god he's one point away from jake oh my god jake has played in 50 games patrick 35 Lyman assists has played in 33 <laughs> boone has played I think he's yeah he's played in 52 games yeah he hasn't yep. missed a game this season so um, he is five points away from Boone. Boone's played in 52, like I said, and he's played in 33. So he is what, <laughs> if, if my math is correct, which I've never been a math guy, right? 19 games, he has played less. He's like five points away. Oh my God. Um, I think we got ourselves our superstar. <laughs> yeah. And I think this one wants to be here. And, and, and I, I think and it's like, we've talked about, we've talked about this before. Mm -hmm. over the summer of the I'm trying to think of the best word the insecurity of this fan base yes because when, of superstars yes, yes. because you know they, they look at oh you know Panarin left us and 
you know, Bob left Jeff us. Carter didn't want to be here. Yeah. And people say like, Oh, but Bob left us and Rick Nash wanted out. And it's like, well, Rick Nash was here for a decade and we didn't win anything. We made the playoffs once. And it's not like, at. yeah, it's not like he, you know, wanted out from the get go. Mm -hmm. Sergey Bobrowski signed two extensions with the blue jackets while he was in Columbus. One Vesna's here. Don't forget that. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, like, yeah, and Panarin never had an issue with the city. He just wanted to play for the Rangers. He wanted yeah, to be exactly. in a big city. Like, and, and so, like, this fan base, I get it. I get the pain of, like, always feeling like we're starting over because of superstars. Even Cam, like, you know, Cam loves it here. Yeah, Cam loved it. Uh, and, and and Cam never wanted to go, but he wants to they, retire they made, here. Yeah, they they made a business decision. Hell, even Jake. Jake was a guy who loved it in Columbus and ended up becoming a, a star. Um, but he never wanted out. They just he was one of the, the sacrifices they made to get Jeff Carter, and that one just it just didn't work out. Right. You know, so and, and then they ended up getting him back for Cam Atkinson. So like, it's not that players don't want to play here. I'm looking at Zach Wierenski who signed an extension. I'm looking at Bjork who signed an extension. Jake's um, here for Jack a while. Lundin. Yep, Bo Boone signed an extension. Um, not to mention Gus Nyquist. You got him in free agency. Yep, he um, wanted to be here. So like, th it's not an issue. Boakfast probably will. Boakfast loves it here. We're, we're going to have guys that, you know, we have guys that want to be here. Elvis signed mm -hmm. his, um, so he's locked in. Like, you know, you just rattled off like five or six other names. We have guys that want to be here. Exactly. And Patrick Line came out and said, I like it here. He cares about winning. And he said, you know, as long as we're winning, it's cool. But, and here's the thing. It's the perfect time to negotiate because I know that we're not a playoff team. Teams winning games. They're competitive. Yeah. They're a hell of a lot more competitive than we anticipated. Oh, yeah. Like, okay. So these last three games, a huge win against Toronto that I thought we weren't going to win. Yeah. I didn't think we were in that game for a while. Yeah, for real. And it's like, not to be, you just go into that game like, God. You know, Barube, oh, nice, cool story. You got to win it against Buffalo. But still, it's, it's his second NHL game in four years. Over He's going against Austin yeah, over Matthews. A, what, and, over and a Mitch thousand Marner. days? Yeah. You know, and, and, and John Tavares. And, and hell, you know, they, they got some other good players. Michael Bunting's a good player. Granted, JT is on a really bad cold streak right now. But... Yes. Yeah, but I mean, he's, he's still JT, man. He, he, you, you break out of that slump anytime. The second he breaks out of that slump, he's going to be a menace. Oh, yeah. You know, so they're a really, really good team. And wasn't that also the game he got his first point? <laughs> who? Oh, Barube. Barube. <laughs> yeah. Wasn't that the game he got the assist on the uh, Coast to Coast uh, Boquist yes. goal? <laughs> yep. So. And here's the thing. It's not just their ability to win games that I'm looking at, but I want to see situationally how this team performs. Yes. Specifically, okay, let, let, let's look at the last four games, okay? Mm -hmm. um, so, okay. They go down 2-1 to one against Buffalo. Yep. They give up a goal to Tage Thompson. They go down 2-1. Ten seconds later, they tie it. Right. Ten. Ten seconds later, this game's tied. That's how you and respond. That's, yes. It, it's how you respond. Okay, I'm looking at Toronto, which is Toronto's an unbelievable team. Toronto scores first after one period of play. You're not on the board yet. Patrick Laine scores. You tie it up. Then Austin Matthews gives them the lead right back. So you go into the third period. So that's two periods that you have completed. You're down one nothing. You're down 2-1. to one. Mm -hmm. You go into the third period, and you get a power play goal. And, right. and Bokvist ties it. Brendan Gaunt, you know, beats his man to the puck. He beat Labushkin, right? Yes. Poor, poor, poor Labushkin, though. It's like, that's a he rough was debut. A tough spot. A really tough spot. Because he, he doesn't debut. know anything. Right. He doesn't know anything about the system. He's, he, this is his first day on the job. And they're just like, hey, all right, you're playing second pair of minutes. So, well, because there's also, like, there's no muzzin for <laughs> yeah. a long time now. And they scratched Justin. They, they could have played Justin. 
left, and I don't know why they didn't. I mean, I know he's struggling, but, like, he knows it. He yeah. knows the system. I mean, you're, you're making the decision, and it's not like there's a huge talent gap between those two guys, but that's, it, that's throw, another conversation throw in, for Yeah, throwing Ilya Labushkin into the Wolves is a little rough. <laughs> yeah. You and know, having it, him play with Sandine, I know that's a big step for Sandine, but, like, it is. Because Sandine's expected to, to carry that defensive pair. He, he has mm-hmm. the responsibility of helping this guy out. Right. <laughs> He's just, what is he, like 21 years old? He's 20, I think. Jesus. <laughs> but but anyway, like, so so Gaunt scores, you make it, so you're down one nothing, then 2-1. to one. You Which, how big of a surprise is Brandon Gaunt's been, by the way? <laughs> He's been awesome. So he, he I love him in the bottom six. I would consider maybe giving him an extension maybe give mm-hmm. him like another year and, and and see if he can continue battling because I've, I've liked his game but give him a one way keep him up here yeah and then you know with two minutes left they find a way to tie it jason spezza i mean because it's always spezza that has to show up it's always <laughs> and, and there's a lot of like controversy around the goal is it kicked is it redirected does the league know what a kick is all God, this stuff. It's, it's, Brad Larson's furious. You have every <laughs> reason in that moment to just absolutely lose your shit because it's like fucking Christ. Like, what the hell? Because is it that? is a kick. Like it's this... literally a kick. I, I know, like, with the way that they've called and they've called it consistently, that that is by their definition not a kick. I'm not upset in terms of them calling seriously that with, goal because of how they call that's the one thing they've been consistent on with the I'm way that they're calling because this it's thing. stupid it's the way that they call it is stupid with the, with the way that they're calling that. these goals okay mm-hmm. do you have to like bicycle kick in order for them yeah. to call this back like <laughs> yeah, no no you got to go full ronaldo on the puck in order for it to be called a kick you have so, to <laughs> it, it's ridiculous you have to go full it's, on cassian like in do you remember when Cassian was like in the scrum with Chernak and he was like laying on top of him and then he took his skate and just kind of pushed him in the chest yeah I do remember that you, know, yeah. <laughs> you have to do that yeah you have to go full on with that in order for it to be a kick and even then I mean who knows me who knows maybe if you blow on the puck they might be like oh actually blew it in you know <laughs> <laughs> but but my, my point here down one nothing down 2-1, up 3-2, mm-hmm. they yep. tie it late, and they just keep finding ways. 20 seconds. They had every reason to just lose it. It took 20 to seconds. They, 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 right? Isn't that the kind when, – when Jason Spezza tied that game up, did you expect them to win in overtime? I didn't. No. I thought, oh, Honestly, God, I, I didn't. Sucked. I was like, you know, at least they got a point, but, like, I expect them to lose here. What was funny, I was <laughs> – Seconds. I was, chir- I was chirping – I was tripping in our little group chat <laughs> where because uh, like, Emily was like <laughs> Matthews over line A and then after they won it I replied and I was like excuse me now <laughs> which is my favorite thing like I love the uh, Matthews versus line A thing because like that was maybe a conversation for two years we all know that Austin Matthews is better but it's well, like a yeah. thing on Twitter now but they're both because unbelievable it, players yeah exactly it's not it's not McDavid versus Eichel. It's not Crosby versus Ovechkin. It's right. just below that level. Yeah. Because they're both unbelievable players in their own right. They're both amazing goal scorers in their own right. Right. You know, it's not a conversation that happens, but would be like a hilarious one to happen because people would be like, what? <laughs> what? If you're doing like the battle of like one versus two. What's that? He sure and Patrick. Jordan's- Jordan Stahl over Eric Johnson. Oh! Just <laughs> go well, all the way back to 06. God. <laughs> where it's like the first and second overall picks were like two solid players, neither one became stars. Right. Like, a, yeah, I want to see like a weaker draft class like that. You know, right. get that kind of treatment. <laughs> get that conversation going. Ryan Murray's better than Neil Yakupov. <laughs> I mean, he is. <laughs> one's in the national hockey league one's not yeah but then they move on to the florida game yes this one first florida game 
Well, it's funny because we were talking about this in our, you know, just in our text messages and we were like, okay, so far they got killed nine to two, then they got killed eight to four. What are we going to expect out of this one? And I called six to three. Yeah, you said six to three. And I was like, that sounds appropriate. (laughs) Um, You nailed it. I nailed the score. I didn't nail the winner. (laughs) Yeah. Good for us, though. um, underrated, unbelievable, top 15 defenseman in the National Hockey League. Mackenzie Weger gets them off and going, one nothing in the first. Mm-hmm. They go down early again, Jake. And what do they do? Patrick Laine. It was a layup. That goal was unbelievable because <laughs> it was just two-on-one, great pass, good shot, goal. But it just – it looked so effortless. It's just Patrick Laine. A pass like that should not look effortless, and a – shot like that should not look ever it looked like well, a layup okay so that one was another jake pass was it not yes it was a typical jake sauce right on the <laughs> bang back of the net unbelievable but like you, you look at the high level of skill first of all credit to jake who you know we always talk about this guy doesn't play defense he made a great defensive play to create the two-on-one active stick in the, in, in, in the defensive zone mm-hmm. breaks up a pass takes it to get the two on one right so good play on his end defensively and then like i said just unbelievable saucer pass right onto the stick into the back of the, and it just it was such a high skill doing, level play and it just looked like a layup <laughs> doing his job like we've said in previous shows literally he's doing exactly what they brought him in to do exactly which is Absolutely. feed line it like mm-hmm. that's <laughs> That is quite literally the entire reason that we got this guy. And he's been great at it. Yeah, I mean, 35 apples, like, sure, you kind of expect a little more than two goals, but. um, Yeah, you know what? (laughs) I can live with it. It's just like, it's, have you seen that gif of the incredulous dog? No. (laughs) The incredulous black lab. (laughs) I don't I, I, maybe I have but I'm not it's not registering right it's now. like my favorite gif in like all of tenor where it's just like uh, and it zooms in on this dog's face it's, <laughs> that's quite literally how I feel watching Jake Voracek and Patrick Laine <laughs> yeah I mean here's the thing Voracek played 53 games last year um so you know he, he had 34 assists in 53 games. He's got 35 assists through 50 games this year. Now, no, granted, he had four goals. But he only had nine goals. It's not like he was a, a prominent goal scorer. He's never been a prominent goal scorer. The most no. he's ever had in a season is 23, and that was in 2013. Still, like, that's really good, though. It is good. Um, although, I, you can make the argument that his best goal scoring season was when he had 22 in the lockout shortened season where he only played 48 games in terms of pace, right? In terms of pace, because 2016, 2017, and 2018, three seasons back to back to back, he scored exactly 20 goals. Oh, okay. This is a really good player, man. I mean, this what he's up to 775 points in 1,018 games. Oh my god! Yeah. <laughs> I just wanted to say that because that was a recent caption on a Jake picture that they posted on their socials. <laughs> yeah, so this guy, like on a on a year to year basis, is averaging about sixty two points. It's a good player. Yes, uh, absolutely. And the Florida game really showed, you know, like they already got killed in the first two games. I'm sure they're happy they're not going to play Florida again. Yeah, I, you know what? It gives them some confidence after getting absolutely murdered by them twice. Yes. That, like, we can play with that team. Yes. You know, we, we can do it. Like, I, I don't know necessarily what the issues were in the first – because here's the thing. This, this team's not great defensively. We know that. Well, yeah. Um, we didn't expect them to be. And, and no, and no Z was, doesn't help because apparently he was hurt. Mm-hmm. in a recent game and he's been yeah. out for the last couple but yeah here's the thing jake i'm talking like 
looking at these games, there's adversity. They're going down early in these games. Mm -hmm. They've got players out. Right. They're on their third goalie. (laughs) They're on their fourth, fifth. Well, who would be the third? I I I I take that. Technically, Tarasov is third. Like in terms of the depth chart, Tarasov is third, which I guess um, here, let me see my notes. Let's mention this now. Tarasov is out for the remainder of the season with hip surgery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So right now it's in terms of depth chart, Barubi is now third. I assumed that, that Barube was just third, but they wanted to give Tarasov a shot, which I thought was fair. I mean, that but... is fair. Okay, once we'll say three A three B. Sure. So, so like 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 they're but like they're not on their starter or their backup. That's the, that's the point I'm trying. That's to get the big at. issue. Yeah. Is Jake? They have every reason to lose these games. Every reason. Calling calling up Jet was like as soon as I saw that announcement, I was like, uh oh, oh shit. And they're winning games. They and are. I think that this. I think that. I mean, they didn't win their last game but it's okay quick recap of the last game it's a shutout against carolina we it's it's fine it's carolina it's carolina i i I could you know i can live with it we also kind of shut them out the last time yeah we beat them six to nothing so like you know it's been a weird been a weird couple season series where you look at carolina and florida where it's like oh well we we lost seven to four and then we beat them six to nothing and then we lost four to nothing four nothing and then you look at our panthers like we lost nine to two and then we lost eight to four and then we won six six three three. (laughs) it's like they've okay this whole season has been blowout after blowout after blowout and it's like two of the three are against us and then we salvage one and Mm -hmm. like and it's like okay it's our turn yeah and like you know down one nothing against florida and then you know you score a couple of Gabriel Carlson puts you up three to one. Mm-hmm. Um, but then you give up the, the play in front of the net. Huberto gets a goal. Panthers are starting to push. Jonathan Huberto. Guess what? Man. Two goals in 10 seconds. You're up five to two now. Again. They score goals in bunches. They're, they're, they're finding ways to win hockey games. And I think here, here's what I like about it. I think you are seeing a new school style of hockey yes. under Brad Larson, but you are also seeing the same resilient, positive tendencies that was instilled in this team under John Tortorella. Absolutely. I think, yes, we've talked about the combination of Torts and Larson, you know, mm-hmm. in previous shows where Tortorella's defensive coaching is obviously, you know, going to still be a part of their mindset. I, I think what they, they've changed totally how they're playing. But the one thing that we, we always had to give Torts credit for, and we have over the years, was this team always found ways to win games when they weren't expected to. The 2019-2020 season was, the whole season was that. Yeah, you lose everybody. You know, we, we talk about but Panarin's gone. Um, you know, Duchesne left. Bobrovsky Duchesne was left. a rental, but still, yes. But still, like, like you, you didn't keep. Dzingel left. left. You, you just your whole roster just gutted in terms yeah. of your top six. Nobody thought that team was going to the playoffs, and yeah. you're now on a rookie in Elvis Merzlikens, and you know it's Corpus Allen. You didn't know any. You didn't know what you really had in him at that point. Right, and. Corpy was that willing team, you into the spot. That team with that roster that was already not projected to even come close to the playoffs had injuries. Nathan Gerby was playing top six minutes at one point. I forgot about that. They, that team made the playoffs. Yeah. And, and remember the 20, the 2016 17 season was his first full season behind the bench. It was after that disaster, 15, yes. 16 season, when we yep. started off 0-7, and, and that's when he got hired. And we didn't know what the direction was with the team anymore because it was like, 
we we thought that we were going to be a consistent playoff team after the 13 14 season right then the next season we had injuries then the next season we sucked he took that team they won 50 games yes they out did. of nowhere out of nowhere and the only reason they lost in the first round was because they played the penguins and the penguins are i mean and they penguins. went on to win the cup <laughs> yeah i mean there's no shame in that Really? No shame at all in losing to a team like the Pittsburgh Penguins, a team with winning habits, a winning culture. Sidney Crosby and Evgeny Malkin. Among Especially other. if they go on to win the cup like they did. Exactly. So, like, <laughs> I'm looking over, like, the whole course of the Tortorella era in Columbus, he instilled a winning culture, mm-hmm. winning tendencies. Positive habits. But po- positive. And, and they just, they have good habits. And they just – they don't get down on themselves. Yeah. When, when, when things were the toughest, when, when adversity was looking you straight in the face, we have every reason to lose games because of injuries, because players have left, because everybody's down on us, whatever. That was when the Blue Jackets were the most dangerous under John Tortorella. And right now, you know, you had Z out. Nobody thought this team was going to be a playoff team. And they're not going to make the playoffs, but still – you, you, you know you got injuries and stuff like that you got a tough stress when you're playing good teams you're on your third or fourth goalie whatever way you want mm-hmm. to define it every reason on the planet this team has to not win hockey games first year coach look at them they're as hot as they've ever been <laughs> they're yeah I, we thought the 12-6 stretch at the beginning of the season was we thought that was the hot stretch of the season it was yeah. not it wasn't, <laughs> we're in it now this is so much more impressive than the first 18 games of the season in my opinion just as long as they keep these next five because remember we called these next eight the most yeah, crucial we the Buffalo the game in that it, it started with the toronto game so we're yes. three games into this eight game stretch and we're two and one now and the, the, the one i have no shame in yeah, <laughs> like I'll None. take this. Like I'm for not sure, upset with it at all. Like I'm just, I'm genuinely, I'm looking at, it and I'm like, you know what, this is fine. Yeah, I can, live with it. I can more than live with this. There's and next, okay. So next, there's Pittsburgh tomorrow. Tuesday, yes. you're at home against New Jersey, and you're that at is home a game both games. Expect you to win. Yes, Pittsburgh again, home ice. If you lose to Pittsburgh, it's Pittsburgh. It's fine. You would like to. You'd love to beat them, but the 31, 14, and 8. Yeah. Um, the only thing that I'll say about oh, it's a four game home. It's a five it's a five game homestand coming up. Woo! So that that's the one thing that does give them an edge. The only thing I'll say about the Penguins, though, is depending on their result tonight against the Rangers, the Penguins are going to be in the midst of a back to back. They'll have played their third game in five days. They're going to be tired. They're going to be tired, and they've lost three in a row to this point. Oh, lost four one to Toronto, Ooh. lost three to four to Carolina, and lost six to one to New Jersey. Oh, that's right. They're just coming off of that. So they're playing to about that. three o'clock against against the Rangers. My my buddy Aiden uh, and his brother actually came down. They are actually going to that game right now. Awesome. So, hope, they, hope they have fun. <laughs> My, my, my buddy Aiden's a Rangers fan, but his brother, Noah, is a Penguins fan. So that'll be a fun. Oh, fun great. Trip. Little little sibling yeah. rivalry. That's nice. But that's that's a tough one. Like, like it's tough because it's the Penguins. But I'm not yeah. saying I expect you to win. But I am saying. Find there, a way. There, there is reason. Find a way like you have. There is reason that you should find a way. The Devils game, I expect yeah. you to win. And then your next three games after that, um, two LA days off, and for a playoff then, spot. yes, um, Boston, Boston is be in the midst of a back to back, and Boston, Boston's weird, man, because Boston, Boston's like I said, I said in the mix, podcast, yeah, Boston's going to be pretty fine as far as playoff spots concerned. They're going to make the playoffs, but any Bruins fan will tell you from what they've watched this season, that they're the weirdest team in the league and that they are world beers. They can beat any team in the national hockey league. They Mm -hmm. they can go out, they can beat Colorado, you know, they could be Vegas, 
They could be Toronto. They, they could be Tampa. Tampa. They could be any of those teams. They also have the ability to lose to the Senators. <laughs> they have the ability to lose. I mean, well, the, listen, you can say that about anybody, right? Yeah, but in Boston especially. But like, at the Bruce same time, yeah. Very, very weird on this team this year because – I know there's been a lot of frustration with that team. I mean, they lost lost 4-1 to the Islanders the other night, and I know they weren't happy about that. But Boston's been one of the hotter teams in the league for, I would say, the last month and a half. Bergeron and Marchand being out for the ways they were doesn't help much. Mm -hmm. They were still finding ways. Yeah. But, I mean, yeah. So, okay, next stretch is home against Pitt. Home against NJG, and then two days off, you host the Kings, you host the Bruins on a back-to-back, and that is Rick Nash night. Yeah, I was gonna, I was about to mention that because that would be my other reason to say you should win that game. That is Rick Nash night, and that's also Nick Felino's return to Columbus. So it's a, a, huge, it's a night. huge night. It's a huge emotional night. Pack that barn. Right. And you know what? Well, here's the thing. That game sold out. So that's Oh, that's right. It's you're, already sold out. Yeah. You're you're gonna have home like true home ice advantage. That, that, here's the mm. thing, man. Um, we haven't really been talking about this as of late. For a team that's not nearly as good as they've been in previous years, you know, under the Tortorella era where you know they were winning um well, you know, they, they won 50 games mm-hmm. and they made the playoffs several years in a row. Six straight years, right? I'm pretty so sure it's 16, 17, 17, 18, 18, 19, 19, 20. So four years in a row. Four years in a row. Okay. Yeah. And they also had the 13, 14. So there was, they had like a stretch where they could have made the playoffs like every year, but the 14, 15 season. They had the most injuries in the league. Bottomed out. And, yeah. The 15 60 season was just weird. They just just, sucked just a no wash. Injury. But um, yeah, like if they were if they didn't have the injuries in 14 15, they would have made the playoffs. What would that have been? That would I think have been six, seven years four. in a row or seven or eight, something like that. But but still, it, it was right. a really good stretch of hot. It's a really good yes. stretch of hockey, which is which is the like whole point of it. But it's the see. best era that they've had. <laughs> Easily. Um, but right now I'm looking so let me let me try to do this in terms of percentage. Uh, um, let me just okay. let me just wrap the okay. So the home stand ends with another game against Toronto. <laughs> There's some surprises on here. I'm not on, gonna on uh, March seventh. Okay, um, where okay, so 32 teams in the National Hockey League. Mm-hmm. Where do you what do you think the Blue Jackets? Where do you think the Blue Jackets rank in terms of percentage of people who attend the game? So, not in terms of this total capacity per game, because every arena is different in terms of how many people right. they hold. So, like some arenas are going to have higher numbers just because they have more seats available. So, right. where do you think the percentage of seats filled? Percentage of seats filled, yeah. Like, what rank do you think they're in out of 32? Can I give you, like, a range? Give me a number. I want to hear an exact number. Uh, An exact number? Okay. Uh, I'm going to say 13. Close. Okay. That's 16th, which is pretty good for their their history. For their history? Yeah, I'll, I'll take dead middle. I, I I didn't think that it was going to be that high to be honest because usually and it's not even against the fan base it's just usually because and we've talked about this they're usually you know you, you sell out the season opener and then like for the rest of the rest the of the season is kind of mediocre until uh, until January I don't want to say it's dead it's just it, you know it's it's okay they'll fill about eighty percent of it it's a football city because it's a football yeah. city it's, they care about. Ohio State first, and then you got half the cities, you know, caring about the Browns, half the cities caring about the Bengals. Mm-hmm. Um, and 
you know, once Ohio State season ends, it kind of depends on how the team is doing that will determine where they're right. at for attendance. So Ohio State wins the Rose Bowl. They're done. Where are the Blue Jackets at? Well, they're not a playoff team. They're in a rebuilding season. Mm-hmm. I kind of expected them to be probably in the 20 to 23 range for percentage. Right. Higher than I expected them to be at this point in the season. So let, let me list the teams that they're above. Okay. Okay. They're above Detroit, <laughs> Vancouver, Ooh. Philadelphia, oh. Florida. I mean, Winnipeg, Los- now, now granted, Another thing to consider here for some of these teams, um, where they are, yeah, for all, well, percentages dip for the Canadian cities. Yes, that too, because of yes, COVID restrictions and that sort of thing. So, so let me let me, let me redo this. So, Detroit, um, well, Vancouver still because it has an effect of Vancouver, um, Philadelphia, Florida, L.A., mm-hmm. New Jersey, Anaheim. San Jose, San oh. Jose, really low. Um, yeah, the players because they're not terrible, but it's concerning. It's very concerning. And then um, Arizona and Buffalo. But yeah, they have been they have I... been aided by the Canadian cities dipping because I wouldn't expect them to be above a Montreal or a Calgary, especially in the season that they're having, or Edmonton. Edmonton, definitely not a Toronto. Um, but, but yeah, that's, that, you know, cause some of these cities haven't been affected by it. So like, I don't think Winnipeg's being affected by it. I don't know. I think Winnipeg's they're fine. At 79%. Winnipeg's fine. Um, Vancouver's the, fine. Ottawa um, is Ottawa especially because they don't play in downtown. Well, they'd be, they'd be above Ottawa anyway. Yeah, but still, again, no Ottawa doesn't play downtown. They play way out of the way. It's a whole mess over there anyway. <laughs> exactly. Um, but yeah, so this season, especially these next five, six games to you know go into March, um, like we said, season defining and absolutely yeah what do you think now that we're kind of coming out of the recap portion of this uh who are we shopping who can we buy who can we sell what what's the deadline going to look like for columbus because we talked about last episode a little bit more of just a general deadline preview we didn't really talk about what's going on with columbus Okay, well, there's a couple different ones that are interesting. And I pitched to you, you could probably get a decent pick for Dean Coogan. I like him. I have no issues with him. But two things. One, you can get pick. And mm-hmm. two, I don't really think he's a long-term part of the plan. So right. you might as well give him away and open up a spot for someone. Give them an audition. Someone like a Gabriel Carlson or yes. Jay Christensen. Um, so I, I think that that one should be a lock because mm-hmm. I haven't heard any and anything on the ends of trying to extend him. So I would have to assume that that's going to be a move that they make. Um, Corpusalo is another one that we've been talking about all year long. Corpusalo, I think needs to go. And it's, you know, nothing that's something against him. I just think the last two, it's not working with him anymore. No, it's really, maybe, not. maybe he needs to change the scenery. Maybe he's that one of those guys who just needs to change the scenery. Could be. Um, I heard, recently on discord and stuff uh shout out to zach who like runs his own blog and podcast and stuff good discord member good dude um i still kind of need to check out some of his stuff he was talking about he's apparently got sources somehow (laughs) i don't know how um but he was talking about like the rangers and the leafs are in on max yes those are the two teams that have been linked to Max Domi. So the Leafs are interesting because I'm not sure what they're going to give you outside of draft picks. I think that – I know the Blue Jackets want to get picks out of the deadline mm-hmm. for the players that they sell. I also think that they want to get prospects. I think they want to get guys who who are already at least somewhat developing – that are closer to eventually making a roster. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So I'm not sure what either one's going to give you that you're interested in. Now, now one thing that's interesting that, that I'm not sure if the Rangers are in on, I would be potentially interested in dealing Domi to the Rangers in a package around Kravtsov. Kravtsov would be interesting because, because you know, I don't think that's a broken a relationship. That, it's yeah. a broken relationship, so his value is down. So you'd mm-hmm. be buying low on him. And I'm at that point where I feel like the Rangers, he's just, he's just no longer in their plans anymore. So no. I think you might be able to, to, to get a deal centered around him where maybe you can get other assets too. Like maybe if you get Kravtsov and a pick. Maybe. You, you, um, you feel dumb for him. Well, that's the thing too, is we've gone back and forth on Max. Like we don't talk about Max as much <laughs> as we did, but well, we're not trying to beat a dead horse, but... No. We personally both really love what Max is doing this year. And we said before, he's one that we... Per, the two of us want to keep him. Yeah. It's a, like, I want to keep him because I like him as a player. Yes. And he's like been he bouncing does. back very much. Like, there's, very there's nicely. He's got bite to his game. So he feels like he feels like a blue jacket, doesn't he? You know, He absolutely does feel like a blue jacket. Um, <laughs> he's Jason's guy for a reason. Like <laughs> Exactly. I, I love the guy. But I don't know where he fits into their long... I don't know if he fits into their long-term plans. Because In the terms long-term of- plans down the center is, you know, Jenner's your guy. He's your captain. Yeah. You also got, you know, other guys like, you know, Liam Foody. We're not sure where he fits in the in the mold long term, but he is there's, he is a center. You got Kent Johnson. You got Sean Cole. and Sean, Cole. Sean's already under contract. So like I, I'm not a hundred percent sure what their long term plan is. If they do extend him, are they planning on you know keeping him in, in the fold of the center? Are they gonna move him to the wing? Right. Is there any permanent identity with him? Or is it because here's the thing, I wanna keep him. Mm-hmm. But I don't want to keep him just for the sake of keeping him. I want to keep right. him if he's a, a legitimate part of our future plans. Yes. If he's not, then they need to deal him. Yeah, exactly. I think the fact that his contract is up and it's not even that much, it's like a middle of the road kind of money. Yeah, it's five five point three. That's not, you know, that's not cheap, but um, it's not really expensive either. Right. And I don't know. I don't think the Rangers cap situation is that bad, but if you needed to, you could retain half the salary because it's ending at the end of the year. So that's, yeah. that's not a big deal. And you could get more value out of it if you did that. So mm-hmm. I hope the Blue Jackets maybe keep that idea on the table. But yeah, I, I in terms of just looking around at at the other other teams because the Leafs I'm looking so we're talking like Leafs and Rangers are the two top suitors I feel more comfortable dealing him to the Rangers because there's more players on the Rangers that I'm interested in than on the Leafs if I'm making a deal with the Leafs the deal is gonna have to be centered around Timothy Lilligren yeah. And I'm not sure their willingness to give him up. Well, I think the thing with Lilligren is, you know, he's finally getting a shot at a regular spot in the Leafs lineup. So, you know, they need to they need to keep giving him his chance. Exactly. And the reason I would want him is because I think he's a good puck moving defenseman and he's right hand. And top. he is. Yeah. So that's why I would want him. So that that's that's just me personally. This is Max coming to me about Max Domi. I'm saying that this deal has to be centered around him. And if they're not willing to do that, that's fine. I totally understand it. I'm not blaming for them for not being willing to make a deal at all, but that's just how it is. I'm not going to make a deal with you unless I'm getting that player. Max is 26 years old. Mm -hmm. He's in 42 games this year. He's got nine goals, 15 assists for 24 points. Uh, He's a minus two, which I mean, eh. minus two is not bad. Um, what's funny is like, you look at his career, he -hmm. is one goal shy of 300 career points. He's sitting at 99 career goals and 200 on the button assists. Wow. 
So he's close to goal number 100. Hope, hopefully he gets it with us. Um, yeah. I mean, can that please be his 300th point? Because that would be just like chef's kiss, like perfect math. <laughs> it would be. <laughs> he's yeah, a career. Max, Max has been, been pretty he, good this year. He's a career time. minus 16. Oof. Well, career though, I mean, how many games has he played? 471. Minus 16 in that many games is really insignificant. Fair, yeah. Especially considering that he played a, a significant part of his career with Arizona. <laughs> with a, yes, exactly. And uh, like a Montreal team that was kind of on the rise and then mm-hmm. fell off a cliff. Yeah. So like, but offensively, this season, he's been ranked in the 63 percentile, which is around where his finishing percentage has been. Mm-hmm. um you know he, he's he's okay like he's got a decent shot you know he's never been like a true true goal scorer but never been um, a like never really been a good playmaker he's been a very good just general forward too like a utility yeah. forward almost because we've seen him used at center we've seen him used on the wing in every city that he's been in right So he's a very good, you know, all around forward. Absolutely. And there's a lot to like with him as a player because, like I said, so he's 5.3, which isn't really too significant. Although it's interesting with Toronto because I know they're interested. I wonder how they plan on dealing with that. I know that they, so they just dealt nick ritchie which gives them a little bit more cap flexibility but that's also to make room for riley's extension right that's but, what well, you, that's essentially have, what the ritchie move was for <laughs> but you don't have to worry about that for this year because that extension doesn't kick in until next year so a rental like domi doesn't have an impact on that mm-hmm. so it does help your immediate cap hit although He's making what I think 2.5. 2.5, like, yes. Nick Labushkin's making 1.7. So mm-hmm. it, it helps out a decent amount. It's interesting with Domi because I feel like if you're making a deal with Toronto, you almost have to retain salary unless have they have they put have they put Muzzin on L T I R? Muzzin is on long term, yes. So I don't know what their cap situation is as of right now with that. That might be a move that helps them get Domi. But for the least, man, like, and, and I don't know. You'll have to ask Emily or Christian this because those are the two closest least fans you have in your, that you know. Mm-hmm. Max, Max is an awesome guy. Oh, yeah. Awesome. He's great. Great dude. Good in the is community. What the Leafs need? I don't think so. I think what I think the Leafs need more than anything. The Leafs need. <laughs> they need a second pair of defensemen, right shot. They need a second pair of defensemen, right shot. They need a left wing on their second line. Which because that might be where their plan is for Max, maybe. Because because Kerfoot, you know, they've been trying to shop Kerfoot for like ever. <laughs> Do you think that would be what the deal is uh, centered around then? Like Ker- Kerfoot? Ker- Kerfoot and Max? Uh, I mean... I wouldn't mind Kerfoot because like Matt, like Max, you can put Alex Kerfoot in either spot. There's some flexibility with Kerfoot. I do like him as a player. That would be interesting if they're trying to just do a straight up upgrade. They trade Kerfoot and picks to get Max. Mm-hmm. That That is intriguing. But like I said, if the Rangers counter and come in and say, okay, you can, you can take Kerfoot and picks. We'll give you crafts off of picks. I think I'm going to take the younger guy yeah i think because again they need a guy that's going to play with Tavares and willie mm-hmm. and then the rangers i mean they don't need much because i mean look at them <laughs> their rangers rangers are doing just fine um i mean the, the rangers i think could use more help on defense specifically yeah the third pair um I Which I they, think that's where, like, if Columbus wants to make an in-division deal, that's where Kooks could go, maybe. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, because, like, him and Patrick Nemeth could probably, you know. That'd be a solid third team. pair. That'd be fine. You know, th- that that third pair isn't, isn't lined up any worlds. 
the Bless mute you. button. Hey, hey good uh, job. Look at me. <laughs> but no, that, that third pair is the definition of just adding absolutely nothing offensively or in transition, but they're that solid is, in their own. That's your, that is your shutdown pair in New York right there. <laughs> It, yeah, like for the third pair to be able to play like what, like 15 minutes a night, but they're yeah. live on their own end. That's can't ask for much more than that. Right. I mean, when you have guys like Adam Fox and Keandre Miller, and mm. you know, like Jacob Truba's bouncing back a little bit. And... Well, yeah, I mean, Tr- Truba's bouncing back, but Truba's issue in New York so far has been just the, the overall cap it that he is earning. Mm-hmm. The amount of money he's making, right? His money has been equivalent to the offensive output that they expected. But he's been right. he's been good defensively. Yes. Uh, another guy that they that Columbus could shop is Rosie, which I would hate to see them shop Rosie. You know who's interesting that we can get to in a second is Tex. Yes, there have been rumors about Texier, and I don't like that either. <laughs> it depends on the right deal. So. I think we can talk about these two guys together. You have two guys. Now, one has term after this season. That's Texier. He's at 1.575 yes. for this year and next year in terms of cap hit. Oh, my gosh. I keep exiting the roster because I'm trying to just look at stat lines. And then when I hit back, it brings me back to the homepage. And I'm like, please. But you also you also got Roslovic, who doesn't have term after this season, but is a restricted free agent. So... You keep, you know, whatever team were to acquire him, you have his rights. Yes. Um, so. Roslovic in 51 games has eight goals, 14 assists for 22 points. And that kind of offensive output has been pretty equivalent to what we saw with him in Winnipeg. He's also been, you know, like he's been centering the fourth line for a majority of the more recent months. Yeah, he's he's struggled, um, but th- the potential's still there. There's 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 things to like about his game. Texier, yes, and okay. Uh, Roslovic is twenty five. Yeah, RFA, um, which you know, again, we've talked about this just privately. I would love to keep him just for the local aspect, <laughs> like. Having guys that you developed in your, <laughs> you know, in your junior system, right, is huge. Yeah, especially for a market like Columbus, that which is trying to develop into a hockey city. Absolutely, you have Corral, get- you have Roslovic, who both came up through the AAA Blue Jackets. Um, Cole Sillinger, you know, Mike had a stint here and like, it's a whole family thing with Sillinger. And then there's Carson Meyer, who's played in Ohio state and now he's here. So you have four dudes, (laughs) um, that are all local product. I'm going to send you a picture. Okay. Okay. And I, I want you to look at this with Jack Roslovic because I think this is incredibly interesting. Mm-hmm. Um, it so it's the last three years, so it takes into account the last year that he spent in Winnipeg. Yes, it takes into account his first season with Columbus, which was last year, mm-hmm. and it also takes into account uh, this season with the Blue Jackets. I want you to look at like the blue, like the straight blue, <laughs> and the mm-hmm. dotted blue because. The straight blues is offense, and the data blues is 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 uh, finishing. Okay, go ahead and send it so I can look at this. Okay, uh, you said the straight blue is his offense. But just look at the like the pattern of it. It isn't it identical, but it's just above. Yeah, that's wild. That's weird. I've never <laughs> seen that with a player like consistently. Every, so like every year. So this is his, his offense in in the nineteen twenty season was twenty two percentile. Uh, last year 59 this year 42 but um it's just the lines above it going in it's just a weird it's a weird parallel line (laughs) it's crazy so this this guy is a guy who just looking at that number you can see he's i would say an average player at creating offense it's Mm -hmm. just that his finishing is significantly better 
Yes. So what you're getting is a guy who's a decent playmaker. Mm-hmm. It, it's okay at creating mm-hmm. offense, but can finish on his opportunities. The problem is though, is that you only have eight goals because of the lack of minutes. Yes. This is a guy who's just not getting the time, the opportunities um, to finish those opportunities. So, you know, I, I would say there are teams that should be interested in him because of the, of that right there. Mm-hmm. Uh, teams that can actually give him time. Exactly. Uh, um, as far as Texier goes, mm-hmm. if, you know, since we're tying these two together, uh, mm-hmm. 36 games for Alexander Texier, 11 goals, nine assists, 20 points, even plus minus, which again, plus minus is whatever, but still 20 points in 36 games, 11 of them goals. He's 22 years old. Yeah. You know, he's, it's, it's... he's a natural center too. Mm-hmm. So that is a guy that I want to see them you know, give more to. So if you're going to deal Roslovic or Domi, why mm. not give Tex that chance? It's it, you know, it's possible. Um, the reason that I say, it, it, here's how I analyze this. What I think that Columbus is doing, mm-hmm. They're feeling offers on a young guy betting on the potential. It, it's not that they're out here actively trying to trade him. Mm-hmm. I think they're testing the market just to see what they could get for him, uh, to see how he's valued. Because yeah, okay, what they that makes said more sense. is Yarmo is looking in a Texier trade. He said what his expectation is if he's going to complete one, he is looking for a roster player. So a player who would be on your roster next year. Yes. As well as a first round pick. So I think you need to consider that because if a team comes forward with an offer that you you have to analyze it like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. I like Alexander Texty. Someone made a comparison the other day that I actually really agree with. Mm -hmm. Um, I saw it on, I think I saw it on Twitter. Someone was like, Team should look at a Texier because even though he has what's a, the one grade we have with him is, is consistency. He hasn't been consistent. Yes. But we see the skill. The skill Absolutely. is on display. The so, skill is like, you know, the skill is magical. I mean, we've seen that yeah. multiple times with the moves and the stick work and the skating, especially like in the bubble against Tampa Good. and Toronto. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, you see it in the shootout with the French poke. <laughs> yeah. Uh, the comparison that someone made that I actually think is fairly accurate, not in terms of like, oh, he is like this player. It's if he reaches his potential, he'll be like this player. Mm. If he reaches his full potential, he's got a lot of Carter Verhage in him, doesn't he? Oh, he kind he does. I think he kind of does. Yeah, I think is then isn't that a fair comparison? If this guy reaches his potential like you think, that's who he is. I think yes, especially like because if if, if we talk about Carter Verhage, he was a draft pick by, he was a he was a Toronto pick that got flipped multiple multiple times. Yeah, he ended up going to Tampa <laughs> where he was shadowed. This guy was playing in the ECHL, had to battle his way, got up to the AHL, and it wasn't until he was. He signed a one-year deal with the Panthers. They got a chance. Mm-hmm. And, and he, he was playing with Barkov and Huberto and lighting it up. Broke up. So, um, you know, he's a late bloomer. Um, I don't think Texas is going to be that late of a bloomer. Um, the pedigree's 22. good. 22. He, so, was, was he, no. he was usually the, the 42nd or 45th overall pick, correct? I think you – yes, he was in the 40s. Yeah, in 2017. So relatively recent. He's a young kid. So he was very high draft pick. There's, there's a lot of skill with this guy. There's a lot mm-hmm. to like about this player. Yes. But like we said, it, it comes down to, are you willing to make the bet that despite his, ish, his consistency issues, he, we are still going to develop this kid well enough that he becomes the player we think he'll be, that it's going to be 
greater than the output of a trade off or a team gives you. That's what you need to be confident in saying. Because mm-hmm. if a team comes forward with a good offer of a first round pick for this year's draft, and a as very well as comparable a, roster player, yes. You know, a, a, another solid piece that you can use um, on your roster next year. If a team comes with you with that, you need to be confident in saying, if we're going to say no to this deal, it's because we believe what this player is going to become is greater than this offer you're giving us. Right. So I'm not saying they should trade him. I like the guy a lot. Frankly, I agree with you that I would much rather them trade Roslovic and give him a shot at center and and increase his his ice time. Mm -hmm. That's something I'd like to see them do because I think he is a guy, I, I like that he can play both. I'd also like them if they keep him before the end of his contract, you know, if say, say they keep him and they decide to extend him. Okay. Mm-hmm. By the time he signs that extension, I want them to know this guy is a center or he's a left wing. Yes. The, he you can do- play both, but I want them to define his position. Yes. You, you need to do that. Like, you know, they, this happened with Boone a lot. It happened. Where- yeah. A lot and they finally this year especially you know in, in the last the last couple of years they, they kind of knew he was a center but this year especially they said no he is a center yes and i and they're, like they're, they're kind of done max is a little bit of a disservice with Ma- that too max is the same way yes i was going to bring up max where he's he was promised to be a center mm-hmm. when when they brought him in in the trade mm-hmm. And then Torts decided, no, you're a winger and you're playing in the bottom six because I love Torts to death, but he's Torts and that's <laughs> the Torts thing to do. Um, it's one of his, it's one of his few flaws, but yes. um, yeah, I feel like they've done Max a little bit of a disservice to do it. Because Brad's problem, doing the same the thing. Team. They're like, not the only team to do it. No. Because happened in Arizona, it happened in, in Montreal, it's happening here. What's his fucking position, man? Yeah, exactly. Like I said, he's just a forward right now. That's why I think, it, it, in terms of where he could go, I think for Max, mm-hmm. the best place for him to go would be the Leafs. Because I think Sheldon and the Leafs would just straight up say, you're not a center, you're a left winger. Right. You were playing on the left wing. You're playing you're with playing JT and Willie. That, that is your role. Yes. I would like that for him. I wish we would have done that, but we didn't. But that that's where you know he could he could get the best usage of his time would be in Toronto on a good team, a team that's trying to contend. Mm-hmm. He brings he's got a lot of bite in his game, which is good for the playoffs. He's a good playoff player. Yes. Um, and, and he would have a defined position. He's on the in the second line on the left wing with John yes. Tavares. That would be mm-hmm. a good role for him. The problem is, is I think you get the most out of the Rangers. <laughs> uh, right, yeah. Uh and then you know. Where does Rosie go if you do the whole thing with bringing up Texier and his minutes? Do you keep Rose? Do you keep Roslovic and just try to increase his ice time somewhere? Um, like, what do you do? It's it's a whole centers in the NHL are always a hot commodity. It's your most important position. Yeah, but they're also when you have too many log jammed it, everywhere it like, becomes tough because you're putting them everywhere and you're, you're kind of stunting them a little bit you know yeah it's and, hard to develop a guy like and here's the thing like also for the future i think purely and, and i've talked about i like i like tex as a center at times mm-hmm. i think they should just keep him on the wing and the reason i think you should keep him on the wing long term is i want him to learn that because i want him to just learn to be a winger and just develop as a winger just for the future because you got, like we said, we, you got Boone, you got Sean. Those are two guys who are already on this roster. Cole yes. is also already on this roster. Yes. These are three guys down the middle. You are guaranteed these are your centers who are going to be on this team next year. Mm-hmm. But you're also going to have Kent Johnson. You have Liam Foody. You know, there's other Who centers. knows what the fuck's going on with Liam still? Nobody knows like... what the fuck's happening out with him. So, like, I, I would rather just say, fuck it. You're a winger. Right. Maybe they should have done that with Jack because Jack can play right wing. Maybe they should have done that with him. He can play right wing. You're right. 
So I don't know. That's the one thing. That's the only complaint I have is this that's, team defines what players are offensively. That's a good point. You know what would be an interesting, okay. I want to see them try this for one mm. of these games coming up. Mm-hmm. I want to see something like Max Corrali Roslovic on your third line and then a fourth line of like Texier, Danforth, and Robinson. Robinson on the right. That's interesting because Robinson doesn't really play on the right side. So, like, I, your first line is – is it's what it always is. You, you it's what it is. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Boone, Boone yeah, and Jake. Um, well, what would your second line be? Second line um, – oh, God. Uh, Gus, I would say Nyquist, Sillinger, Chinnikov. Wow. Chinnikov's high up there. I don't, I don't have a problem with that. I just – well, no, but I mean, interesting, we've interesting. we've seen the chemistry between Cylinder and Chinnikov in the Where, past. So, so do you, you're not putting Bjorkstrand in the top six? Oh, you're right. Borky should, pro- yeah. Because mm, I, I would. So I agree. That's with a pro- that's a problem. So See, this line. is what I'm talking about. This yeah. is what I'm talking about with a center log jam. Yeah. Because it's trying to find places where everybody should go. So. I would put your second line. I put Cole as center. Mm-hmm. Um, Yorkstrand on the right. Yes. And well, put Texi on the left. There you go. Okay. So put put him on the left, and then your third line. Um, put Nyquist and Corrali Jack. Hmm. See, this is where it becomes interesting with like lines and stuff like that. See, because this is what you know, I'm just trying to go off of yeah. you know, making Jack a right wing and putting Tex on a wing and t- like just trying to experiment with that, right? Why don't you put Domi on the left wing on the third, third line? Okay, um, put Roslovic on the right side. So that so you're you're using you're utilizing both of them as wings. Yes, and then do you put, put Corelli sh- in the middle? Yeah. So you're gonna have a little bit of bite on that third line, you know, with with Domi and with Sean. Mm-hmm. Um, and then fourth line, I put Gaunt on the left. Okay. With uh, Gus on the right because Eric Robinson's out right now. Okay. And then poor Gus getting demoted like that, though, is kind of rough. Yeah, I mean, it's not that he deserves it. It's, it's just more so trying to see. It's just trying to fit where people can go. And then I'd, yeah. put, I'd put Dan Forth at center on the fourth line. Okay. Because I because here's the thing. I want to give guys opportunities. I want to shake it up and, and see where players can fit. But at the same time, I don't want to take Brendan Gauntz out of the lineup. You need to also, like we've said, you need to give guys assignments. You need to define where they can go. Yeah. And that's one of the things I like about Danforth. Danforth, you're on the left wing, you're in the bottom six. And I think he plays that role well. Right. Um, I think Sean, here's the thing. Sean plays his role well. You're in oh, the yeah. bottom six. He's, he's the is perf- he is the perfect third line center for this team. <laughs> I, yeah, I think, I, in, I think he does what he does really well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, He's having a good season. Like in, in terms of like the course, you look at the course of his career. Mm-hmm. I, I think his output this season's been been pretty solid. His defense has gotten so much better this year, dude. Yes, his offense. I, he's having a career the, year offensively too. I talked about his his defense and how like he's been a very overrated center defensively. Mm-hmm. Because you anticipate like, oh, this guy's been playing in the in the bottom. I said this in the off season. That was a concern that I had when we signed him. Because I'm like, we signed this guy for the bottom six. Like he's a good penalty killer, but he's not great defensively. Right. This, so like, the 19-20 season defensively, 12th percentile. Oh. Um, the next year, it's the last year, 13th percentile. Do you want to know what percentile he's in this for defensively this season? 
Uh, I'm going to say 10th. No. No? No, because remember, he's improving defensively. Oh, wait. I I was barely listening. So he was I'm in the 12th percentile and 13th percentile. 12th and 13? Okay. Where do you, you think said, he shot up this year? I'm going to say... I don't know. I'm going to be cheeky and say seven because that's his number. <laughs> well, no, because you want the number to be higher. So um, he went from 12 to 13 to 92. Oh. Whoa. Okay. Never mind. I was thinking, okay. I was my, I got my numbers backwards. Yeah. <laughs> I got my, because like analytical numbers to me aren't like, and again, I'm tired work. Fair enough. <laughs> But yeah, no, this it, his his offense is, has been pretty good this year. Eighty two percent. He's in the fifty five percent offensively, which is higher than what it was last year when he was in the thirty six percent. So like his offense has been bad. Um, his finishing is below. He's in the forty percent shooting, so he's not yeah. shooting as well as his his offensive creation is. But defensively, man, like he he's been better than what I was expecting coming into it. Yeah. He's a good he's a good third line dude. He's like he found his role right away. Yeah. I, I like him on this team. Um I want to say because he's gonna have three years of term left after this season. Mm-hmm. So I just sent you the, the picture of what his stuff is so you, you can get a good look at it. But um mm-hmm. <laughs> I just I heard yeah. it go through. Yeah, but long term, man. Three years after this, I feel comfortable with the contract. I was skeptical. Oh my goodness! Point five. Look but... at look at that shoot up. Yeah, he oh. played his role to a T. That's like so, skyrocketing I like on this team. Yeah, I do. Um, absolutely. I think okay. I think that covers everybody, right? The... Yeah, there's nobody else. I really feel. Is oh, okay, be- wait. Corpusalo. Let's just get Corpusalo out of the way. Yeah. We've Maybe talked about bit. we've talked about him going to Edmonton for Koskinen, which is a thing that they won't do. <laughs> this is a thing that Ken Holland won't do. Um, I don't think that that's the interesting. I know that Edmonton's interested in Corpusalo. I'm not sure kind of what it's going to be centered around. Frankly, I don't care what they give us back in terms of players. I don't need Miko Koskinen. So no. if they're like, oh, we're not going to give up Miko Koskinen, we're only going to give up picks, I would be like, oh, okay. Even cool. better. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, fine. Make it make it make it Elvis and Barubi, like you said. Yeah. Yeah, no, I honestly I'm fine with that because I want Barube to get his chances the backup with this team. I think he's earned it. Honestly. I'm not against giving Barube an extension. No, I mean, again, give small him a one-year extension. Give him a one-year extension. It's a small sample. So give him a one-year extension and saying, you know what? Next year, going into the soft season, going into next year, you're going to be given a legitimate opportunity to be the backup of this team. You did also say that it would be nice to give Tarasov another year of the minors to develop. I did. So, yeah. That I think you that flexibility. They don't need to go out and, and, and look for a backup goalie and say, we're going to spend X amount of dollars. I think you go into next season with, with Barube and say, because here's the thing. We're, not, we're also not going to be expected to make the playoffs next year. Right. And if he, if he doesn't live up to, you know, what we're hoping for out of him and backup goalies a whole, it's not the end of the world. It's really not. Right. You can live with not having a backup goalie as a team that's not expected to make the playoffs. Especially if you're giving like a 50-30 kind of split. Yeah. Which then, I don't even think, if Elvis is, is healthy for an entire season, I don't even think they would do. I think they'd give Elvis like 60 starts and give Barube the other 22. Mm-hmm. Would be kind of the split that they do. Right. That depends, again, health. <laughs> Yeah, it depends on how. <laughs> and, and the unfortunate thing is, it's 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 hard as a goaltender to stay healthy over the course of an eighty-two game season. It's it's one of the hardest positions to stay healthy in. 
it's weird watching guys like Vasilevsky pull as many games as they do or like you yeah know, because if you, look if you think things he does and you're like how are you not pulling your groin every season <laughs> yeah how are you not torn in half yeah because and then you just ridiculous and then you just like you know we see ridiculous seasons in the past like well uh what was it it was um 72 games for andrew raycroft 72 for cam talbot <laughs> like yeah. how do you what how do you have no backup goalie to the point where your starter has to play 72 out of 82 games here's the thing i'm actually pretty sure it was 73 <laughs> Yeah, that's like even I I still couldn't believe it when they did that. Like they it was they were it was such a bad situation. They were like, no, we literally cannot start anybody else. Oh. This is not a winning formula. Like it's just not. You're gonna kill your goalie, right? Cam Talbot's luck. It took him a couple years before he was able to regain form from that. Yeah, yeah. Um, and and he's I mean, doing it with a while, so so good for him. Well, they're also you know having him be able to share the net more with Kakinen, which is nice. Exactly, it's key. It, it is key to being a good goalie is is just having a backup goalie who you can rely on, so you can get rest. Yes. Um. So Corpusalo, in terms of destinations. Mm-hmm. You know, we know what we can expect in a return or want in a return now that we've talked about, you know, giving Barube a chance at the backup job. Mm-hmm. In terms of destination, like, who needs him? Who needs a guy like Jonas Corposalo? <laughs> at this point? Well, let's, let's look at teams in the NHL. Okay. Mm-hmm. Florida is interesting just because of the injuries because they, they started Jonas Johansson the other night. Johansson's not oh, going to be right. So I, I wonder if they would maybe make a depth move. You wouldn't get a ton for him in that didn't, situation. Didn't we already play. joke? Didn't we already make some jokes about, about him, him going yeah. to Florida and then Bob being yeah. like, oh, this guy again? Yeah. Um, <laughs> got it. It'd be amazing. And then you're just, <laughs> I know oh, you've been, yeah. really... Jari does need some help, doesn't he? He needs some help because the Smith's not giving it to him. No, he's not really giving him a rest. No, so uh, Capitals could use a goalie for sure. Yeah. Uh, as much as like I hate looking in division, it's like really. We take a break real quick. I gotta use the bathroom. Okay. Okay. Oh my god. Okay. Sorry. We're back. <laughs> um. Yeah. So Corpusalo. Who knows? Um. We gotta get out of Columbus. Uh, talk for once because I still have a lot of stuff we need to at least just kind of address. <laughs> Sure. So deadline for Columbus, we'll see what they do. There's a lot of things be they can do. Yeah. Because they're really in a position where they could do either. Right. They're in a position where they could do either or both and be fine. <laughs> um, I don't see them doing any buying at the deadline. Um, unless, of course, it's for long term. Right. Um, but I, I, I doubt that they do anything significant. I really don't think they're going to do anything significant in terms probably, of that. Probably they might, not. They might trade Roslovic. They might trade Domi. I think they'll trade Kukin and, and Corpus Allo, But it's not going to be like a huge fire sale kind of day. No, thing. it's it's not it's not Buffalo in 2014-15. No, it's, it's not like that at all. So. <clears throat> Um, we already talked about Tarasov being out, which is super unfortunate because we, you know, we were just wondering and wondering when is he coming back? Mm -hmm. And now we know with hip surgery, he's not. Yeah. Sad. Uh, he, he deserved better. He did. He deserved a win in any of the games he played. 
God, yeah. Uh, that's the only, like, I, I think, like, regret of the season I have so far. Like, damn, I wish we could have done that. Was I know. I wish even that could have win. He deserved it with the way that he played. Yeah, because he played out of his mind. Yeah. Um, another goalie. Carey Price is making progress. Good. Um, been, a weird, been a weird, and when I say year, I mean, like, past 365 days for Carey Price, huh? He's still not ready, obviously. Yeah. Um, that's all we really like know. It's just good that he's making progress. It's good that he's making progress in his life more than anything. Yes, because the whole situation where he left, um, you know, early this year to deal with the off-ice issues that he's been going through yeah, because he cited substance abuse, and we're not going to speculate what it is, but I'm, I'm just glad he's okay. Yes, it's... And I'm proud that he recognized that he had an issue and he needed to address it. Yeah, um, you know, he willed uh, Montreal into the Stanley Cup final. <laughs> he did. He absolutely did. He's an unbelievable goalie, incredible career, great person. And I'm really glad that after everything that's happened, that he was able to take a step back and say, this is more important than hockey. Very strange that he got exposed in the Seattle expansion. Like I get, yeah. I get that he's your franchise guy and that his cap hit is just monstrous, but like you really going to do that, even though he, you know, that's like his home state. I think, I think that they, did that knowing damn well that Seattle wasn't going to take the bait. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, it's like there were a lot of moves like that, right? Where there were yeah. guys with just huge... Well, Max. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Max might be traded at the deadline. We might get legitimate assets for this guy at the deadline. <laughs> they took Gavin <laughs> Bayer. Seattle could have had him for free. <laughs> well, they yeah. took Gavin and then brought him back. They, they did the same with Vitek Vanacek, and it's yeah. like, that's a guy that they could use right now. Well, I was dying. I love what uh, what Steve Dangle said on his, like, recent video when he was talking about the Blue Jackets uh-huh. game. Oh, in the LFR? Did yeah. Yeah, did mm-hmm. you watch that LFR? Mm-hmm. It was hilarious because he, he absolutely killed me because he was like, yeah, the Blue Jackets uh, on their third pair played Gavin Bayreuther. Does that sound familiar he was the guy that Seattle took in the expansion draft why is he back on the blue jackets because they just gave him right they back. just gave him right back <laughs> and he was like hey man i mean you have the opportunity to take max domi or nothing you gotta take nothing <laughs> <laughs> oh man yeah um i want to see carrie back as soon as possible i, I yeah. even if it's just a couple of games at the end of this year mm-hmm like, it feels weird to just not have Carey Price around. It feels weird, but, you know, like, like I said. It's like with Jack Eichel, right? Where he just recently started playing his first games in over a calendar year. Yeah. <laughs> and Buffalo then it's a Buffalo <laughs> Um, that that's a trade that I think looking back on it, we're gonna be, be like that's a lot closer than we thought it was gonna be. Yeah, probably. Uh, I think it all depends on how Vegas awesome. does in this playoff, right? True, true. And it, it all the you know it, it, that's what it is for Vegas. We talked about that. Copper this bust, trade, yeah. It it's entirely dependent on if they can win a Stanley Cup with Jack Eichel. Yes, and the same thing with Price. You know, like Shea Weber too, just being done, done is really just sad yeah that's that's the big one for for them is god you lose your captain you lose your number one defenseman Mm -hmm. and that's another just heartbreaker of like this guy isn't gonna get his cup is he yeah it sucks it sucks that that carry praise is not gonna get that yeah but but in fairness he wasn't gonna get it in seattle either (laughs) Um, could have helped their goalie situation a little bit better i know grew is just having a really really down year because your defense is bad and it's like mm, but if they if they had taken gary price they never would have signed grubauer 
Right. And they would they would have just signed Drieger, and Drieger would just be the starter, and he'd probably be in over his head. But like, it'd be so much easier of a situation to manage, wouldn't it? Probably. They were like, man, they shouldn't take Carey Price because he's got a big cap hit, and that's going to be tough to deal with. God, looking back on it, they'd have such so much easier of a time dealing with their cap yeah. situation with Carey Price than. Well, because they also have so look at how much cap space they have right now. Yeah. That's what I don't get is they they did such a good job of giving themselves a comical amount of cap space to do nothing with it. Right. But that's that's another topic for another day. We'll see what they do with Geo, I guess. But like, wow. Yeah, man. What a, they, they they completely botched the draft. Yeah. Mm. I don't know if they botched the draft as much as it's just like they made moves that I think. I don't know if it's a maybe it's a combination of Seattle botching and GMs just getting smarter from Vegas. I think it's a combination of both. But like at the end of the day, like like Steve said, when you have the opportunity to take carry to take uh, Max Domi Max or Domi. nothing. <laughs> but also like, and this is nothing against Vince Dunn, who I think is a solid defenseman. No, he's really good. But God, Vladimir Tarasenko was right there. Yeah. He t- he still hasn't rescinded that trade request either, really, more or less. Like he I hasn't formally he done that. I but they they've shown no interest in trading him. I think that they've they've made amends, and he's having a good season. Mm-hmm. So I mean, what's what's Tarasenko at right now? Let me go to the Blues real quick. He's second on team in points. He has nineteen goals and forty six points in. Mm. 46 games he's a point per game point player. per game player <laughs> so he, he he's back he's all the way back yeah good um but yeah carry please come back soon um i know it's way out of reach but they could still use you <laughs> yeah for some they could still use you for pride <laughs> right yeah um the stadium series is coming up I think that's today as of recording this it's today uh this is yeah. tampa this is tampa bay's first outdoor game which surprises me well it doesn't surprise me because it, they can't do it in florida i mean they could try they could try it's hard to pull off like I mean, they did it in lake tahoe <laughs> where's lake tahoe at nevada well, that's why Vegas was there. It's Vegas, Colorado. It's, oh, like, right. Cal- it's like California area, California, Nevada area. They did it. The weather was good for that day, though. Like, the ice like kept was- melting. Right. <laughs> it's tough to do it. I just, it's, it's a lot. Well, you know what it is? It's not, do you want to know why it's easier to do it in Nevada than Florida? Hmm. Is the humidity. That too, yeah. So, um, like, cause it's a dry heat in in nevada whereas in okay in Florida, it's, it's sticky yeah. and gross yeah. yeah uh yeah fair enough you have to figure out like where they would do it you know well because like dallas just got the winter classic yeah recently um so it's like you know you're trying to do it in warmer climates to make it more fun and grow your markets mm-hmm. florida's getting the all-star game next year because they, they come up with the weirdest matchups, though. Like, you know, if you're going to do Tampa, like, you can come up with a better matchup. Yeah, than, than Nashville? It, why not do it in Boston at, at Gillette Stadium? I know Boston's had, like, an outdoor game before. Didn't they just but... do, didn't they do that years ago already? Didn't they do that at Gillette? They, I know they, do they do it at Gillette or Fenway? They did it at Gillette because Fenway's coming up. Fenway's going to be a winter classic next year. Yeah. You know, here's the problem, Dave, because they do so many fucking outdoor games, they can't keep any of them straight. <laughs> because I remember it was like, what was it, the third one? Because they did Buffalo against Pittsburgh, then they did Detroit at Chicago, and then it was Philadelphia at Boston. That that was in July. I thought that was in Fenway. That might have been in Fenway. I'm, I'm looking this shit up. I got to know. I, I don't, dude, those are years ago. I couldn't tell you. But, like, yeah, the stadium series is coming up. We know. Yeah, that was a Fenway. Okay. 
Well, Fenway's getting a winter classic next year. <laughs> Which is cool, and I love it. But, like, you know what also would be cool? For fucking Columbus to be in one. A winter classic at the shoe or a stadium series at the shoe? Please. I don't think it doesn't have to be the winter classic. Just give me a fucking outdoor game for Give Christ me a sake. stadium series in the shoe, please. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It didn't even have to be in the shoe. It, we, I, I just play in a game. It could be a road game. I don't care, you it, know. Yeah. Can we do one at like I don't fucking know. Uh, can we go to like Heinz or something and play the Penguins? That would be awesome. Right. Or P- here's the thing, because they did the first. Th- so when Penguin, the Penguins had their uh, that was at Heinz. Game. Yeah. That was at Heinz. Why didn't they do that at PNC? The views at that stadium are unbelievable. They could, they could do it at PNC. That would be fun. PNC is an incredible ballpark. It's a good ballpark. It just houses a shitty baseball team. God. Good Lord. Um, the stadium series, we've already talked about the jerseys and how the Smashville one could be so much better. The word mark part of it is just gross and how they're, it's oh, all uneven. Good. It's the like worst trees I've ever seen. The the word mark is so uneven and weird, you know. And it's just a weird yeah. blue stripe. Do you, do you know what it looks like? It's like it, mm. it looks like just, just genuinely like what it actually looks like. When I first saw the concept, I was mm-hmm. like, "Oh, this looks like when someone buys a fake jersey online and yeah. it doesn't like, come out the way that you anticipated it would." That's what it looks like as a normal jersey. I like the pick. I like the guitar pick in the center. I did the guitar pick logo that the Predators use. It's I so really cool, like that. Isn't it? It's a very underrated logo. Yes, but it is. They should they should do more with it, but it's just like like I don't like the jersey. You know what? I, I've said this before on this podcast. I really like is their old throwbacks, like mm-hmm. their alternate jersey they had in like 2011. Oh yeah, with like the 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 skeleton tiger. No, it's a different one. It's it's a very like. Cla- Let me see if I can find it. Doesn't Tampa's jersey also remind you of those like styrofoam cups with the with the scribbles? Like, do you know what I'm talking about? Yeah. <laughs> no, I know exactly what you're talking about. Um, <laughs> I like Tampa's more, but at the same time, it's like it reminds me of those styrofoam cups with like the blue and purple scribbles on them. I was saying this to you, but I'm also going to show the, the audience so they can like see it visibly. Oh, so that like, one! Yes, the blue is great. Yes, the because like I like it mostly because like just look at the logo; like it's so classic. Like you have the oh red yeah, eye the logo's yet. like silver and it's got the it's red silver eye. and it's got that light blue outline to it. I really like those jerseys because the it's red just, eye it, looks so menacing, right? And it's like there's not a lot of colors to it, but it's very subtle and it's very unique. And it's nice to look at. <laughs> it is visibly pleasing to the eye. <laughs> not sma- It's not Smashville, which I get that Smashville is a great nickname for the freaking like city in the fan base and whatever but the way the jerseys look with it on there Mm -hmm. it's just oh yeah these are the ugliest fucking jerseys on the planet but there's no logo more menacing than this one oh god the the, the, the mustard tiger that that shit's actually good enough to scare the fuck out of you the mustard tiger (laughs) Which, by the way, doesn't uh, Vegas's gold jerseys kind of remind you of that now? <laughs> doesn't it look like mustard now? That a you've little seen bit. Them enough? Yeah. You know what uh, the, the, those two jerseys combined like together that remind me of? What? The fucking mustard Jaguars uniforms. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like the, the, the Jaguars, you just look at the fact that like the Jaguar kind of look, the logo's a little similar to the mm-hmm. Nashville Predators logo. You take those like mustard jerseys, you're like, that had to have been inspired. Right. The uh I like what Nashville's doing in terms of uh, you know, keeping it country and keeping it Nashville, especially with the um with like I think it's Dirk Bentley and it's not care is it Carrie Underwood? I don't know if it's Carrie. 
it, would be it's, incredible. But it's got to be Carrie. Like, come on, Carrie Mike Fisher. Is, like, seriously. Can, can you just picture Carrie Underwood's up there and she brings Mike Fisher on stage? Exactly. Crazy. Like, they got to do it. I've seen uh, Dirks's bar over there in Nashville and it's fun. Like, I wish I would have actually gone in there, but it's like, it looks cool. Nashville's a fucking awesome place. I gotta go again. It's so much fun. Nashville's unbelievable. Just the whole state of Tennessee. I love the state. Yes. Of yes. So much to do in all the cities. The food is unbelievable. There. Oh, yeah. Their Margaritaville's fun. <laughs> yeah. But just like, like any barbecue place in Memphis mm-hmm. or Nashville. Mm-hmm. And Gatlinburg too, and like the pancake yeah, oh, pantry in Gatlinburg. Yeah, oh. Gatlinburg, Pigeon Forge, those are fun. <laughs> For okay, uh, another thing, like, <laughs> oh, we had a gush over the state of Tennessee. It was I know. Fucking- <laughs> They're having a really good season too. It's awesome to watch Nashville yeah. bounce like this, um, especially with Joey and Deshane having the bounce backs. They're having. Yeah. You know who I feel bad for. Who? You say Soros, and you want to know why? Because any other fucking season, this dude would win the Vesna Trophy, right? And circuits gotta go out there and have like a nine forty save percentage. This dude's gonna be like, man, what the fuck do I have to do? Like, are you kidding? Like, this dude is so deserving of a best. He's having a Vesna caliber season, and Igor's just like, yoink. (laughs) <laughs> this is so frustrating. He has to be just sitting there, just like, man, what the hell? Come on, <laughs> come on. That's gotta be so. <laughs> uh, they also, speaking of goalies, they retired Pekka's number. That, just that the was other awesome. Day. It's perfect. Yeah, another goalie to the Rapids this year. Damn, man. Another, another goalie. great goalie who had an unbelievable career who just didn't win a cup. Just couldn't. Mm. It's really frustrating. Yeah. And I love Pekka Rene. Like, mm-hmm. I'm, like we love Henrik Lundqvist, we love Pekka Rene. Pekka Rene, um, Carey Price, and Henrik Lundqvist are all going to have incredibly similar careers. And the fact that they're going to be arguably in the conversation, because Pekka Rene is the greatest Predators goaltender of all time. Yes. <clears throat> I think you make the case that Hank is the greatest Rangers goalie of all time. I think that's oh, yeah. Carey Price, I'm not sure if you want to say he is the greatest Canadians goalie of all time. Statistics-wise, yes, but at the same time, they have such a rich history. <clears throat> exactly. It's the rich history. But three incredible careers, three first ballot Hall of Famers, no all cups. made one time, all lost. Oof. Uh, Hank so lost in five, Carey uh, lost in five, Pekka lost in six. Oh, God. It's so heartbreaking, isn't it? It is. And then who's next, do you think? Because, like, there's Tuka Rask, who could mm-hmm. be next. Um, there's another one. I can't remember off the top of my head. But there is another goalie that recent. Oh, uh, Bobby Lou. Yeah. Yeah, Luongo is up there. Another yeah. guy. Great career. Made the finals once in his career lost. Mm-hmm. So God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, uh, congrats to Pekka. Absolutely well deserved. And, you know, he's another guy that's like, he, you know, yeah, could stay involved. You know, what's what Jersey ceremony in a couple of years is going to be really fun mm. it is uh, Mark Andre Fleury's in Pittsburgh. Oh. Because they're, they're, I'd have to assume they're going to retire his number. I would think yes. I would think yes. Uh, yeah. The Blackhawks have narrowed their general manager search. So, no, this is not. Oh, God. You said no. the Blackhawks. And I just immediately <laughs> started to, like, just shake. Like, what the fuck did they do this week? Hey, at least Danny's statement, like, was actually Danny Wirtz's statement. <laughs> It wasn't stepped God, I, all I, over I by Rocky. Like, I can't even tell you. You just said the black talk. <laughs> my, my skin started to crawl. <laughs> God. So they. <sighs> so we know they've been having a general manager search. We haven't talked about it because there's literally everything else with the Blackhawks that's been going on that needs kind of more attention. 
Dude, I wasn't even aware that they didn't name a general manager yet until you just said that. That's how bad it's been with everything else around the team. They haven't had a general manager in months, and I had no fucking clue. <laughs> I know. I know. So they have three candidates narrowed down now. It is okay. the current interim, Kyle Davidson. Okay. Uh, Matthew Darsh, because he's still out there. Weird. I thought that he would have been the Canadiens general manager just because he's French Canadian. <laughs> right. Yeah. And then a baseball assistant general manager, Jeff Greenberg. I think he's with the Cubs or was. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like. <laughs> so, okay. I can see a case for Davidson depending on how he does. You know what, man? When you and like that, you got to go with the baseball guy, <laughs> <laughs> right? Um, I can see Darsh because you know Darsh is under Breezeball, right? If you want to make the smart decision, I would probably go with Matthew Darsh, depending on how Davidson does. <laughs> nah, man. When you have the opportunity to, to to pick a general manager who doesn't even work in the sport that you're in, you got to go with that guy. <laughs> It's like when you have the choice between Max Domi or nothing. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> you know what we're not talking about? Someone that the, the real guy they should name as their general manager. Hmm. Like the guy that they deserve. Who? They've interviewed him already. Oh, Peter Shirelli. Yeah. <laughs> Get Chia back in the chair. Oh my God! Give him an opportunity. He does. Everybody deserves a second chance, Jake. Honestly, <laughs> honestly, <laughs> um, we got a couple of really quick, fun things to end on. Another congratulations goes out to Big Z Zdeno Chara for breaking Chris Chelios's record for most games played by a defenseman, sixteen fifty-two. He hey, broke Chris it in a he broke it in a that. loss. Yeah. Which sucks. No, it's actually great because fuck the Islanders, but <laughs> but still, like with a special game like that, you would kind of want to win that, right? Right. No, Big Z's had an incredible career. I'd have to imagine this is his last season. I'm not sure what they do with him at the deadline. I don't know if they're gonna move him to a team that he could compete with for a cup. Bring him back to Boston. Okay, if you're Boston, like I mean, if he's fine with playing a diminished role now. Screw it. Like, I mean, honestly, trade like a conditional seventh for him. If the Islanders are willing to take that, they're not going anywhere. Nobody else is offering. Fucking do it, man. Get honor it. Let him go back. This is another one where it's like, huh. Because, you know, he started his career out as an Islander and then he goes to Boston and, or no, he goes to Ottawa, Ottawa. Makes, makes a career out of Ottawa, makes a whole other amazing career out of Boston. So he's known for Ottawa and Boston. Yeah. And then he goes he to the Capitals out of nowhere. Yeah. It's weird. It just, it didn't work out with him the first time in New York. And it's not working out with him the second time in New York. <laughs> uh, uh. So. And I know that there's a significant difference from the beginning of his career when he was an unknown commodity to drafted by Mike Milbury, a fucking fossil. But um, <laughs> no, it, it just it sucks. I, I I know that he wanted his reunion with the Islanders to go a hell of a lot better than it has gone. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, man, the Islanders are having a rough season. Yeah. They're not going anywhere. And a lot of that's out of their control. Because the 13 game road trip to start because your arena wasn't ready. And then, yeah, yeah that was a tough one. It really and then, was. And then the COVID break where they had like 11 players at once mm-hmm. out. <laughs> it's just yeah. like a lot of this is just comes down to really unfortunate circumstances for them. I'd say so. And the problem is, is like, it's not your typical season. No. The East has already been determined. Well, <laughs> like we know who the playoff teams are. So it's not like they can go on some second half run and maybe make the playoffs. Like, no. They Please, need- Columbus, make it interesting. 
Columbus right now, if, if we're looking at the standings, they're the only team that can make it interesting. And the yeah, they're nine points can... out, but still, it's like the, they're nine the games out. The reason they can make it interesting is because the only team they can realistically catch is Boston, and they play them three times. Right. So if you were to theoretically take all three of those games, mm-hmm. you're down by three points. <laughs> Because those are three games that they're not getting any points. Those are three games that you're getting points. Like, they're not going to make the playoffs. And I doubt that they're going to make it super interesting at the end of the season. Mm-hmm. But, God, isn't it kind of fun that at this point of the season, if Columbus I would have said, hey, 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 man, the East is basically determined. There's only one team. They don't have a great shot. But they are the only team where it's plausible that they can maybe make some noise and make it interesting at the end of the year. And it's us. How <laughs> unbelievable that it's the Columbus Blue Jackets. <laughs> it's so good. It's not the Islanders. It's not the Flyers. You know, it's it's not it's not the Canadians who were just in the final last year. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not Ottawa who we thought was going to take a step forward. It's not Buffalo who we thought could take a step forward. It's it's not New Jersey who you know got Dougie was supposed Hamlet to take a step season. forward. Yeah, and. and 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 Tomas Tatar, yeah, they you got know. a lot of good pieces. In and and, they, and yeah, you know, like and Jack Hughes is improving. Nico Heischer is a good player. Jesper Bratt's unbelievable. Jesper Bratt, I love that yeah. call. <laughs> He's unbelievable. And, I love like, that call from Cage. A step forward. The Red Wings have taken a step forward. They got yes, their guy t- in, in the Delkovich. Morf Sider is unbelievable. He's Two Calder freaking. He should easily win. He should win. I, I know toss Trevor's up between him and Lucas, but like, man, I know Zegers is unbelievable. It's this between Cider and Raymond. if Cider doesn't win it. It's it's between Raymond and Cider. It's between two dudes on the same team. Yeah. So the, the and, red. Okay. Wing, Quick all these mention teams, to Tanner Janot while we're at it because this dude is making. He deserves some props too. He absolutely deserves some props. He's having a good season. Yeah. Um. He's a good piece for Nashville moving forward. Oh, but like yeah. all these teams, man. All these teams that we just named that were expected to take a step forward. The Islanders have made the playoffs the last several years. They were in the conference finals the last two years. Yeah. Red Wings were supposed to take a step forward, and they did. They have. You know, yeah. Uh, Philadelphia made some moves in the offseason. They were supposed to be better than they were. New Jersey made some moves in the offseason. Montreal was just in the cup final last year. And who was the one team that's at least close, that could at least maybe, maybe make some noise? It's the Columbus it's the Blue, Blue Jackets. Jackets. <laughs> yeah, it's a good sign. because you know We didn't expect that they were going to make the playoffs. I still don't think they're going to make the playoffs. I, I, I'm not holding out any hope that they're going to make the playoffs, but God... In this season that we kind of went in saying, expect nothing and just hopefully you'll be pleasantly surprised. Are you not pleasantly surprised? Are you not entertained? <laughs> I'm having so much. We've like four years in a row, we made the playoffs. Mm-hmm. We beat the Lightning in the first round. This might be the most fun I've ever had. It beat Toronto in a qualifying round. Yeah. It's just, they're fun. Yeah. It's nice to have fun again, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, props to Chara because especially like Chris Chelios, that's the record you broke. And dude, Chelios played until he was what, like 47? Yeah, he, he played. played for a long time. I still feel like the one thing that I remember about Chelios is just that recent story about him at Wrigley with the Babcock issue and all of that. Yeah. Um, cause, but like, even then he's still like the, one of the best defensemen that we've grown up to learn about. Mm-hmm. Um, cause again, he was outside of our era, but still yeah, the fact that he was around as long as he was and <laughs> seriously. Yeah. Uh, just an un- incredible player. It's fun though. Cause like you have, you know, just last Last year, the year before, you have Patrick Marlowe also breaking the record for just general all-time games played. Mm-hmm. So we yeah, have – you have Patrick Marlowe and Zdeno Chara both passing and topping lists of most games played. Right. <laughs> Which is awesome. 
the fact that it we both awesome. got to witness that is like oh my god that's actually wild yeah uh and i want to end on this just real quick freaking <laughs> publicity stunt hi sean avery <laughs> good lord so this guy publicity stunt ever Sean Avery comes out of retirement after like 10 years. The dude's what, 41? Yeah, he's 41 years old. And he signs a contract with the Orlando Solar Bears. Mm -hmm. He, you know, I'm assuming it was just to see if he still had gas in the tank. I doubt it was for like an actual NHL comeback. No, there's no way he's ever going to do an actual NHL cup. Because, like, you won't, you don't play in 10 years. Like, I'm sorry that you played in the NHL at one point. You have to be, like, a next-level player to mm-hmm. be able to just pick up a hockey stick after 10 years and still have it. I'm sorry. And, like, honestly, like, I can see the humor behind it, and I did think that there were some elements of it were funny. Mm-hmm. But generally mm-hmm. speaking, I, I was a little – bit offended for the like college hockey players who are going into the ECHL or any other players right. who go to East Coast League or the AHL like minor league players who are fighting battling to to get their spots to try and play because they're trying to carve out a career make a I kind of got offended yeah. for the, them to see this like dude who hasn't played in 10 fucking years just being like well, I could come back and play in the ECHL it's like no you can't <laughs> you fucking moron and it had to be a guy like Sean Avery, right? It had. To be. <laughs> and, and it, I was I was really happy that the Solar Bears saw two practices of him. Even they had him for two days, practice with the team. Were like, oh, didn't even guy. play a game. It was just like, <laughs> we're not putting you in the lineup just for some hilarious publicity stunt. We're not going to offend our players like that. I wonder if they actually printed jerseys to sell. <laughs> they might have. <laughs> oh my god well now it's like because what you know is that to just get him back in the spotlight so he can try something else i don't know what else he's gonna try but because he already like he's been in movies like cameos in movies you know what player should pick up a hockey stick and just play like one game for an east coast team who just to make a meme out of it and actually no, the hilarious jer- jersey collection. Oh. Yager. Do it. Just because God. you just add another jersey to the to the <laughs> long collection of teams. Yes. Played. Yes. See, yeah. Honestly, if it's like that'd be a fun idea. The problem is, is he's too busy overseas. Uh, keeping his hockey team his alive. Home team alive, yes. <laughs> so, gotta love him for that. Sean, what are you doing? Sean, just, just live your life, dog. Like, like <laughs> in your life, there, there's more important things to life than than trying to climb back into the the spotlight that you didn't even really have ten years ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh man, what are you gonna do? Next little stretch, we'll have, what, maybe one game? Because don't they play on Tuesday? They play the Devils on Tuesday. Yes. So, so we'll be able to cover Pittsburgh. the game against Pittsburgh tomorrow, which will be interesting because, like we said, the, the Penguins are going to be in the midst of a back-to-back, but it's not like they're traveling a lot because they're going from Pittsburgh to Columbus. It's literally just a drive. Literally, so, yeah. It's and just a bus ride. Right. It also helps them that – um the game today is at three rather than yeah. at seven so they have 27 hours to recover because they're going from a three o'clock start to a six o'clock start the next night yeah yeah yeah. so we'll have the pittsburgh recap we uh i don't think we're gonna preview jersey because of just timing reasons yeah uh probably not but we'll see um Maybe. and then We'll see whatever else we got going on with the team. And if there's moves, there's moves. If there's not, there's not. Uh, And yeah, we'll just, we'll 
watch this show's going to end up like Sean Avery. We're going to put it on a shelf and then we're, <laughs> then we're going to attempt to come back and attack for it. No, seriously, go follow us on Twitter. Uh, I, I've got plans for guests. Like we've got ideas for guests yeah. soon, but we just need to kind of get off our asses and act on that. <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Uh, but yeah, we'll see you guys too soon. J. Jake Jackets, a podcast for fifth liners and all puckheads around. Follow the guys on Twitter at Snake Garinger, G A R R I N G E R, and at By J Ashdown. And subscribe on YouTube or wherever you listen. March on. March on.